Okay, guys, you're welcome back to our channel, The Cool Ace Educational Media. Um, today, we are going to be continuing our practical series. And what we intend to do today is to determine the acceleration due to gravity using an elastic spiral spring. Now, in order to achieve this, I'll be needing the following set of apparatus, a set of 0.1 kg mass, a spiral spring, a clamp, a meter rule, and of course, a stop watch. So what do I intend to do? How do I want to get this acceleration due to gravity? First of all, I'm going to hang in a mass of 0.1 kg on the spiral spring. Now, when I do that, I'm going to measure the extension produced. The extension produced will be the final length of the spiral spring minus the initial length of the spiral spring. Now, the need for me to get the extension is because I need to calculate the stiffness constant of that particular spiral spring because it will be needed in deducing the acceleration due to gravity. So once I've done that, I'll measure the period T of small vertical oscillation of the spiral spring and I'll have to measure and repeat that for different sets of masses, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, up until 0 0.6 kg. I, at the end of that, I'll tablet my reading. Now once I tablet my reading, I'm now going to calculate the stiffness constant from my graph and then I'll plot a graph of m against t squared. From the graph, I'm going to de de deduce the slope and the intercept, especially the intercept on the m axis. And then I will now have to tell you about the theory behind the experiment, how that I can be able to get my g. And at the end of the day, I will deduce my g and record the value of g. And then we'll compare it with the original value of g that you know. So let us go straight to the procedure. So to determine the effective mass of the spiral spring, here is a chemical beam balance. I'm going to have set it to G at zero. So I'm going to place this and record the mass of this spring. So the mass of the spring is 23.5, just to be so sure. 23.5. So I'm going to quickly find the time it will take for 20 oscillations by displacing this mass 0 0.1 kg and then using my stop clock to time the oscillations and then until I get 20, I'll record that. I would have to also repeat it twice in order to avoid experimental error. So here is what to do. Give it a small displacement and release it and then make sure it's stable before you start um, I'm ready to go. So I can start counting now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So here is my time for 20 oscillations, 8.2 seconds. So I'll quickly go again. I'll still use the same. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Here is my time for 20 oscillations. If you look at it, it's the same 8.2. So you can see my time taken is perfect. So we're going to repeat this for 0 0.2 kg, 0 0.3 kg, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.6 as the case may be. Now, in order not to bore you, I'm just going to take this, the other readings and then do the last one for you. That is 0 0.6 kg. Okay, so I follow the same procedure to do the 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 4, and 5. So I'm just going to do this 0 0.6 with us together so that we can tabulate our reading and then I'll show you what the graph will eventually look like. So vertical oscillation, 20 oscillations. Let's go. So I take my, this is my stop clock. I'm ready to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So here is my time, nineteen point one. So I'm going to quickly repeat this experiment again to find out what my time will be. So <clears throat> I'm ready for the second round. 
So here's my time. Exactly at 19. 19. So I'm going to quickly tabulate my reading and show you and then plot the graph and then I'll show you the theory for the experiment and then at the end I will deduce the value of G and I will show you. Okay, so this is what the table looks like. On top of the table you can see the initial length of the spiral spring there written in both cm and in meters and then the table well compiled with the mass in kg the first and the second reading of the time and then the mean time recorded the period t is also deduced and the square of the period is also written on, uh, uh, on the table there now with this i could be able to plot a graph of m against t squared now if i plot a graph of m against t squared this is what my graph will look like now, if you look at this graph, you would see that this graph is a straight line graph. Um, although it is not from the origin, it makes an intercept with both the horizontal and the vertical axis. So I took note of my, my intercept on the vertical axis, which is 0 minus 0 0.01. It's recorded. And then I also calculated the slope. So to deduce the slope, this is what my slope is like so the slope and the intercept both could be calculated by finding the change in m and and change in t squared and then from the graph found the upper and the lower limits of both axes and then calculated it to be 0 0.68 kg per second squared so that's the value of my slope while the intercept already had mentioned is minus 0 0.01 so to get the stiffness constant, I use the mass of 0 0.4 and then I, after hanging in the mass, the extension produced was 14.5 centimeters, which is equivalent to 0 0.145 meters. So um, I took note of that and then you know that from Hooke's law that the, once the el el elastic limit is not exceeded, the load will be directly proportional to the extension produced. So with that in mind, the tension or the load is equal to Kx and I made K subject formula and then I had Lg, which is the same thing as Mg over S. You can see the, 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 the procedure and all the theory is well um, documented for you to understand. Now the L there represents my stiffness constant, which is um, a ratio of the mass um, per unit extension. So if I deduce the stiffness constant L, using a the mass 0 0.4 kg and the extension produced as a result of that mass being hung on the spiral spring which is 0 0.145 the value of my stiffness constant is 2.76 kg per meters All right so knowing that a vibrating spiral spring um, is performing a simple harmonic motion with a period t that is equal to 2 pi square root of m plus m naught over lg this is the equation that we will use to get the period right for a, a spiral spring now where m naught is the effective mass of the spring g is the acceleration to gravity l as earlier calculated is the stiffness constant right and m is the mass right as a result of the mass that is being hung on the spiral spring so if I re um, redesign this equation, I can write it as m is equal to lg over 4 pi squared t squared minus m naught. Now, the reason for this is so that I can put it in um, an equation format that is equivalent to the equation of a straight line graph. You know that the equation of a straight line graph um, is y is equal to mx minus c. Now, the reason for this is so that I could be able to equate my slope. Now, the slope is um equivalent to lg all over 4 pi squared and because i already had um my my value of slope 0 0.68 recorded if i equate it with lg over 4 pi squared and make g subject formula you could see that from the calculation well stated here 
that g is equal to 9.73 meters per second now this is not the exact value of g the exact value of g is 9.87 meters per second of course um, you don't expect me to get exactly that value because there are other reasons that affects getting that value. Number one could be due to my latitude. Number two could be as a result of my experiment. But the value here is pretty much um, close to the um, real value. So this is what I have as the acceleration due to gravity. I believe that this has really been of help to you and then you can see that the experiment is well clear for you. So I'd like to encourage you to always stay tuned to the channel because so many interesting educational resources will be coming your way. Until next time, see you.